I have to mention international cricket. Are we becoming a, a victim of our own success? We've got four players currently touring with England. Add Kane Williamson to the mix as well. Once we get into the summer, is it going to be an issue for us when you suddenly could have four, maybe five players away on international duty when the county season starts? It's the nature of county cricket. Yes, in a way we are victims of our, of our own success or the players' success. But ultimately, you know, players start playing the game because they want to play for England or... Dizzy case, obviously you wanted to play for Australia, and you know when you achieve that, that's you know that's what it's all about. You know we we get great pride from watching our lads, you know play for England, as do I would suggest most of Yorkshire cricket in public. Um, so it, it has benefits. You know the fact that we've got so many lads involved with England, uh, it puts us on the map as a county even more. Uh, it gets us talked about. Um, so there should be you know some benefit. Uh, from that um, but you know on, on a day-to-day -day basis we have to cope with that you know and that's what we've got to try and do is have a squad that's strong enough and big enough to to cope with worst case scenario that that all four you know are not available and obviously we got thrown into that mix we've got five lads involved with the England and 19 squad at the minute as well so you know we've got potentially nine players involved uh, at those two levels with a couple at the under-17. So we've got a lot of in international involvement, but that's what, you know, county cricket's about, uh, is providing cricketers for, for England. And, and it's exciting for us as well, because it, it affords other lads opportunities to play first-time cricket for Yorkshire. And then we get more players coming through, younger players getting experience in first-team cricket. Then our internationals come back, and we've got this group of players who are all hungry to succeed and want to strive to be in that first team. It creates good, healthy competition. Lads keep pushing each other, and that can only be of benefit to our county. Plus, it gives you know the the academy, you know, lads on academy or underneath the under 15s, under 11s, gives them role models to to aspire to. You know, I want to be the next Joe Root or the next Tim Bresnan or Gary Balance or Johnny Best or, you know, and, and it gives them something to hopefully the motivation to be the best they can be. So it you know it creates that interest at the lower levels to to aspire to that, that kind of level. Which helps us then to to hopefully continue that production line. And you know if we can provide England players and still win then that's that's our aim. You know, that's our goal to to produce better players who are good enough to play for England and for Yorkshire as a county to win at the same time is, is the ultimate goal and that's what we're trying to achieve. And Martin, there's a, there's a clear pathway as well because the guys you just mentioned, Joe Root, Johnny Best, Tim Brez and Gary Balance, these lads have all come through the Yorkshire Academy. So these lads that are in the academy now and the kids that are below coming through, they can see a clear pathway to the test side. I think that's fantastic. And that's a real testament to our academy structure here at Yorkshire. Um, uh, you know, Juzy and Damsey and Pick, the guys have been doing some wonderful work with our lads. Um, it's a real testament to them and, and their achievements and helping these lads come through and, you know, start putting pressure on lads playing second 11. Start putting pressure on lads playing first 11 for, for places. And that real healthy competition is great. You know, that's not to be underestimated. The role of, of Ian Dews and Richard Dams, Tony Pickersgill in particular, you know, at the academy level is the lifeblood of the club. You know, and then it goes below that into the age group teams, you know, the volunteers throughout the age group teams and then into league clubs. You know, we need league clubs to have junior sections and we need those to be thriving. So they are, that's where it starts. You know, that's where we, that's where we all started at our, you know, local league clubs and, and with volunteers coaching us. So, you know, we as, you know, Dizzy as first team coach, me as director of cricket, we need that to continue. You know, we, we desperately rely on, on that supply line uh, to be, you know, as I say, the next international player. So, you know, everybody plays their part, really. But maybe it's my old fashioned selfish thinking, but it is quite frustrating that, you know, Yorkshire suddenly have got four or five quality players and we, we don't see them for. You know, for well, it is. 98 it is, Danny, but the facts are that's what county cricket yeah. is always been. Yes, there's more, you know, international cricket now and, and obviously gone are the days where you used to play a test match and then you'd be playing for your county the next day. Those, those days are long gone, obviously. But England have been 
more successful as a as a, an international team since those things changed. You know, we, you know, prior to central contracts, we weren't doing that great, were we? Let's be honest. You know, this lot were dominating all the time. Um, so we had to do something differently because facts are, whether we like it or not, the money comes from international cricket. Yeah. You know, so for us to survive, county cricket to survive, league cricket to survive, we need the cash from international cricket to make that happen. So we need a successful England team. So it all kind of goes together, really. So yes, it is. It'd be great. Well, you know, Dizzy would be delighted if you could have all four of those lads playing every game for Yorkshire. Wow, what a what an exciting team that would be, but it ain't going to happen, I'm afraid. And without giving too much away, you've got contingency plans in place, should those four or five, or it, you know, you've got under-19s players that might want to be involved, suddenly you know, it starts to escalate in the number of players that are playing at representative level. Have you got contingency plans in place to, to, to combat that as such? Well, this is the depth of squad that we've got, um, that you know, Martin's put together. I mean, we've got lads, um, first team and, and second team professionals, We've got junior pros, and you know we promoted a couple of lads up to junior pros this year, which is fantastic for them. Um, from academy, we've got academy lads, and you know as we said, we're you know we're not shy, we're not going to shy away from allowing opportunities for lads, even if they are academy cricketers. If we think you know they can fulfil a role in the first team, they'll be afforded an opportunity. Um, you know we we promoted lads on performances last year. Um, and will continue to do so. Yeah, it's a great motivation for, for the young lads to see that there is opportunities for them. You know, there's nothing worse than a player being stuck in the second team with, with no prospect of him getting an opportunity to play first team cricket. You know, his career is going downhill. You know, with, with our situation at the minute, everybody knows from academy up, they might play first team cricket next year. Just to know that that's what we do. You know, that's, that's, what we, that's what we're about because we have to keep developing. As I've said, you know, we've got to win now and develop for later at the same time. You know, and that's our challenge. You know, it's a tough one. You know, it's not easy to do that, but that's what we've got to do because of, you know, the England call-ups we've got. So it's a great motivation for the young lads to know that they've got opportunities if they perform well. So hopefully that increases the standard of their play. They know... Crikey, if I get wickets or runs here, I could be playing in the first team next week. It's fact. Pre-season, I know you, you touched on it, maybe <coughs> at all, but has anything been agreed yet on where we might be going or what we might be doing? We're very close to, um, to having a pre-season um, arranged. Um, so until it's, it's finally agreed, it would be, it would be wrong of me to to kind of publicise it, but you know, I'm hoping in the next two days we'll get something uh, something nailed. And uh, if it comes off as we would like, it's going to be a really a really good couple of weeks for us. You know, we're going to have great opportunity to to practice what we've been talking about and and put it into um, you know into match play, uh, ready for when we get back. And you know, obviously we start April the first against Leeds Bradford University here, and uh, and hopefully set us up well for the season. You know, it is a vital part, you know, when we're starting so early, April 1st, getting a good pre-season abroad is, is a vital part of the preparation because, you know, chances are we're not going to be able to do much outside before the 1st of April. And you need all the lads together. I know it's important that some of them are away at the moment or going to be going away, but to have the group together for that two to three week period before the season starts, yeah. as, we, as we saw last year, is vitally important. Yeah, absolutely crucial. Um, you know, we see it as, as very important. And I think the lads acknowledge that it, it is important. It's, uh, you know, the first couple of days of pre-season trip away, it's exciting. You know, um, you know even just, just going to the airport, going on the bus to the airport, there's, a, there's an air of excitement. It's, you know, an opportunity to get out of the indoor centre and, uh, you know, put into practice some of the skills you've been working on. So, and lads can all be together, can spend some time together, get to know lads that, you know, you know, young players that have just come up from the academy, um, you know, any new players that the clubs bring in. It's a great time pre-season and, and we're certainly looking forward to it. Do you know in your own minds now that you, the, the strongest 11 that you're going to select when, once we get the season started or is it still too early to start thinking about that? It's, it's very early to be thinking that, Danny. Um, you know, if you, if you base it on last year, our most settled side was our championship side. So, you know, it, it would you would suggest that you know 
we have a bit of an idea as to what that, you know, probably that first team when we play against Somerset, uh, what it could potentially look like. Um, but we, you know, we do genuinely just have to wait and see. We, you know, a bit of an unknown. I mean, we're sitting here in mid-December talking about it, and the first game's not until you know towards the middle of April. So there is a lot of time um, before those decisions need to be made. Um, and you know, the, those decisions are always always difficult when you've got you know a really strong group of players. But um, I'm sure we'll um, do the best we can. International. Just quickly go back to it. Ashes, we know how disappointing it's been from an England perspective, but has it been a blessing in disguise that the likes of Johnny and, uh, and Gary, to a certain extent, haven't been immersed in the uh, in the Ashes in the in the team itself in, in those three first three tests? Well, I mean, losing so heavily is not easy, you know. So um, it's, it's going to be a pretty despondent group, I would think, at the moment. Uh, Funnily enough, I spoke to Johnny Besto this morning on my way to the ground and he, he seemed in very good spirits. He's not sure whether he's going to play in the in the fourth test yet. But, um, you know, it's great experience for, for people like Johnny. He's gained a lot of international um, kind of time, if you like, in the last couple of years. Not played much recently. But hopefully, um, you know, the experience of being around, you know, particularly in this kind of situation, will, will again benefit him in the long run. Um, same with Gary, you know, first tour, you know, he'll be loving it. He is loving it. Even though England are losing, you know, it's a great experience for him. And although he didn't get runs in the first two warm-up games, he's been getting runs since. So, you know, he's, he's, he's showing himself in a very good light. So, you know, I think it will be a positive experience for them. You know, hopefully they're going to get an opportunity to play in the final couple of test matches. And hopefully they'll do well. And then, you know, they're... Well, in, in Johnny's case, he's back on track, if you like, and, and Gary's, you know, start of a, I'm sure, a long, illustrious international career. So I don't think they'll have any, you know, great long-term damage on them to in, individually. You know, Ruti, we know, is strong enough, and, you know, he's played, oh, he's threatened to play some good innings, um, you know, and he's shown he can stand up to the, to the pace of Johnson, and he's not intimidated by it, so I think he'll be stronger as a result of this experience in the, in the long run. Um, you know, Ambrezzi's very experienced now, so that's not going to bother him lo long term either. So I, I don't see it being a, uh, a hugely negative thing, disappointing here and now, obviously, but long term, you know, I think they'll learn from the experience. Alex Leeds, he's just come back as well from the Australia, the performance programme. I saw him in yesterday. How much did he enjoy that? Yeah, he certainly did, and uh, he's obviously been selected for the Lions as well uh, to tour Sri Lanka, which is you know fantastic for him. Uh, he was in fantastic spirits uh, when I spoke to him. He, he really enjoyed it. He learnt a lot, um, and that can only be a good thing. Um, you know, young men having life experiences, like going out to Australia at, at a young age, and you know in that sort of environment, is fantastic for them. Fantastic for their development. As not, not just as cricketers, but as people, and, and that's what we want to see. You know, he's come back with a big smile on his face, he's had a life experience, and he's learned some skills along the way. So it can only be a good thing, and you know, looking forward to seeing him perform strongly for the, for the Lions in the new year. We'll just finish off. Paul Farbrace, how disappointing, and how, how are you going to plug that gap you know, once, once Paul decides to go on to, to Sri Lanka? Yeah, I mean, obviously, Fabi's had this fantastic offer for, for himself and, you know, as disappointing as it is for us to, to lose him because he's, you know, he's been, um, you know, a fantastic coach for the last couple of years. You know, it's fair to say we've, we've learned to, you know, a lot from him, you know, with the vast experience he's got in all, all aspects of the game. You know, he's, he's been a, a, a brilliant influence on us and, and the group, you know, the group of players. So we will clearly miss him um, but obviously we wish him well and it's a great opportunity for himself and we do wish him well in that and uh, you know we'll we'll get a replacement in you know we, we haven't started that process at this moment in time because you know Fabi's position hasn't been 100% confirmed yet uh, but once it is then um, you know this the search for re replacement will start. Did it come as a shock? Well, we've kind of known their interest for, 
for a period of time. Um, so it wasn't a complete shock. Um, you know, I was hoping it wouldn't, <laughs> it wouldn't <laughs> happen personally, you know, being, being selfish. Uh, but, you know, in the, in the cold light of day, you know, it's an opportunity he can't turn down, um, you know, to be the coach of an international team is, you know, once in a lifetime opportunity. So, you know, he goes with our, with our good wishes and blessing and, you know, just thank him for all the work he's done in the last two years. It's been, you know, he's been a big part of the success we've had, hasn't he? Absolutely. And, uh, someone we're going to miss, uh, not just as a coach, but as a friend. He's, um, you know, he's brought a lot to um, the coaching setup. He's brought, you know, the players speak very highly of him. Um, you know, he, he spent a lot of time, obviously, with our second team and a lot of academy lads coming through, but he also did spend a lot of time with our first team. You know, he's with us throughout the T20 campaigns the last couple of years, um, you know, and been a wonderful support. And uh, certainly someone, you know, I'm, I'm going to miss personally, but as, as Martin said, we're, we're going to miss him. Um, but at the same time, we know how big an opportunity this is for him to coach an international team, you know, is, is, a, is a great opportunity. and. and you know, we wish him uh, all the best with that. And just finishing off, do you think it will be an external appointment or will you look from within to try and uh, replace Fabs? Um, no, I've had a few chats and I think it, it probably will be an external appointment. Um, you know, when you look at the, the staff we've got at the moment, um, you know, the academy is working so well with Ian, uh, you know, the head of that and, and Richard Dams. Um, you know, I've been nervous of of kind of um, interfering with that. Um, so, um, you know, the likelihood is it will be from outside, yeah.